Are we ready to worship Him this morning? The name above the battle The undefeated Savior stands with me The fighter for the weary The Lamb of God, the Lion-hearted King of the Father, the power of the undefeated name, the King of every kingdom, He is the champion of heaven over King. And over Above the battle, the undefeated Savior stands with me, the fighter for the weary. Yes, he is the Lamb of God, the Lion Heart. And over every broken heart, the hope is rising.
because we know that you are here and you are present and you are moving in this room right now father god right now in the same posture of worship and gratitude let's just lift our hands to him as a sign of surrenderance lord right now we give you everything we give you everything that's heavy on our hearts that's heavy on our shoulders lord and we declare it right now in the name of jesus that we know it's yours and we know that it is done I thank you, Lord, because you are moving right now. I pray that our hearts are open and we're ready to receive. And not only we're ready to receive, but we're ready to pour out everything that's not of you. Just pour into us right now, Father God, so that that love is just overflowing. So we have this boldness and this confidence everywhere we go to share your love. Because we've tasted your goodness and we know what you can do. We've seen what you can do. We've witnessed your miracles, Lord. I thank you, God, as we're getting ready to go into this sermon series, that our hearts are open and our minds are open, and we're ready to receive, and we're ready to pray, Lord, search me. Reveal my sin to me, God. Make me new. Make me fresh in you, Father. Lord, we thank you for these moments where we just get to praise your holy name and be here in your presence, in freedom, and in joy, and in peace. We love you, Father, and we thank you for everything you've done. And in your holy name, we all pray. Amen. Come on, can we give God some glory this morning? Isn't he wonderful? He's so good. He's so good. Well, good morning, and welcome to Faith Church. It is so lovely to see all of y'all this morning. We're going to get ready to watch our announcements and go into the sermon series. But before we do, if we have any first-time guests, welcome. We would love to meet y'all outside in the foyer after, give you a small present. And tonight, if y'all thought this was amazing, we're getting ready to have encounter nights. Our last night, night three. We've already seen God do so many things. And we're so excited to see what he's going to do tonight. So tonight at 6.30, I hope to see y'all there. But let's take a minute, say hi to someone you don't know. Shake a hand, high five, fist bump, and then we're going to get ready to watch our announcements. Thank y'all and love y'all so much.
welcome to all our guests this morning. We pray that you guys feel at home today and would like to give you a small gift right after the service in the foyer. And thank you for worshiping with us today. Here are these week's announcements. Today is Mission Sunday and Free Coffee Sunday. If you're ready to put your roots down and make Faith Church your home, then we would like to invite you to our week one of Growth Track today in room seven at 10.30 a.m. Hope to see you there. We have already had two powerful nights of encountering Jesus and seeing miracles happen. Make sure to come tonight at 6.30 p.m. for our last encounter night service. We have a special pastor coming in to share a word with us tonight. You won't want to miss it. It's a great opportunity to grow more intimate with Jesus and to invite someone with you. Attention One Society students, Wednesday, March 13th is our late night from 6.30 p.m. to midnight. It's literally going to be so fire, so make sure you're there and bring all of your friends with you. We are collecting donations for our community closet. If you have any gently used items that you would like to give to your neighbors in need, then please bring them in by March 24th. Our Easter outreach is almost here on March 30th. We need your help to truly make this event successful in loving and reaching our community. So please sign up today on the app or website to serve. We have some exciting things planned for Easter weekend. On Good Friday, we'll be hosting a night of worship for our city. On Saturday, we'll be having our annual Easter outreach. And on Easter Sunday, we'll be having all three of our services with an emphasis on bringing people who are in need of salvation and healing. So make plans right now to be there and don't come alone. Check out our app or website to join one of our small groups and start building greater friendships and a greater relationship with Jesus. And make sure to take someone with you. Every Tuesday morning from 6.30 a.m. to 7.30 a.m., we would like to invite you to join the leadership team here at the church as we pray for you and your family, our church, and our community. Download our Church Center app and stay connected. Have an awesome week and remember to fill every empty seat with someone you invite to church with you. Bye! Good morning! How are you guys? I don't know, if, you, if you've missed the last two nights of Encounter Nights, I'm sorry for you because it's been so good. But guess what? You don't, you don't have to miss the last night. Tonight at 6.30, I invite you guys to come. God has been doing so many miracles, and I just believe that he's like only just beginning. And so I just thank you guys for being here today. Like there's just this like overflowing like presence here in this room. Like I just, I don't even want them to stop worshiping. I just want to keep going. But Pastor Ivan has an amazing word for us today. So we're going to hear that in just a minute. But this morning um, is Mission Sunday. So get excited. It's Mission Sunday, guys. It should make you excited because we at Faith Church, we're a church of missions. We're a church that believes that we are called to reach lost people. We're called to reach from the neighborhoods to the nations. That God has given us a mandate, not a suggestion or a request, but literally he has commanded us to go and make disciples of all the world. And so our church here, we commit to reaching the lost, to being the light where he's called us to be. And I just, I encourage you guys, like, understand that today you are a missionary. Do you understand that? Do you really? Do you, okay, do you know anybody that's lost? Anybody in this room, do you have any lost friends? Any like lost family members? If you don't, then you live in a shell. I don't know where you're living. So if you know somebody that's lost, that means that you are a missionary because God sent you on a mission to reach lost people. So today, you need to understand, I am a missionary. I am called to reach the lost with the good news of Jesus Christ. That is my mandate. That is my commission. That is who I was created to be. See, somebody came to you and invited you to church or told you about Jesus, and you are here forgiven, free, redeemed, because somebody told you the good news. And now it's your responsibility to make sure somebody else hears the good news of Jesus Christ. That's your mission. Your call is to be a missionary here in your city, in your workplace. Some of you may get on a plane and go to the ends of the earth, and some of you may never get on a plane, but it doesn't change the fact that you're called to be a missionary. You're called to reach lost people. And this church is committed to doing that. 
And so we celebrate missions. It's not just because it's Mission Sunday. We celebrate missions because we're celebrating the fact that we have a God that redeemed us and we get to be a part of his kingdom in redeeming other people. And so every time you give to missions, every time you support, every time you show up for outreaches and do those things, you're literally saying, God, I'm, I'm partnering with you to reach the lost and to do what you commanded us to do. And here this, this month, we have some awesome things that are about to happen that we need your help for. Easter is just a few weeks away. I know, I can't believe it. It's usually in April, but it's a few weeks away. And how many of you understand the fact this morning that you're in this room because of the blood of Jesus? You're in this room because he went to that cross, shed his blood, allowed his body to be beaten, and came out of that grave for you and for me. But there's a world out there. There's neighbors right across the street that don't understand that. There's neighbors right within steps away from us that don't realize that there's a hope eternal that don't realize that there's a God that heals, there's a God that redeems, there's a God that can take their messy places and turn it into something beautiful. And guess whose job it is to make sure that they know it? Guess whose job it is to make sure that they understand that there is hope for them? It's ours. This room right here, it is our mandate to do that. And so on Easter weekend, I am challenging you to find somebody that needs Jesus to get somebody in this place with you that needs Jesus, be the missionary that you were called to be, share the good news, get them in this room to encounter God. They may not want to come to church with you any other week, but they might come on Easter because that's a religious holiday. They might be, be okay to come. So be bold enough to say, hey, come with me to church. And then let them encounter Jesus and let him do the rest. Also, on that Saturday before Easter, we have a big outreach, our community outreach that we do every year. And we're going to have hundreds of our neighbors right here on our property. And guess who needs to show up to show the love of Jesus? You do. I do. Because, yes, we're going to have egg hunts and games and all kinds of activities for the kids. We're going to have our community closet. But guess what the ultimate goal is? That they encounter God. That through your smile, through your conversation, through your, your enjoying with them the fun and the, the excitement of the event, they see Jesus in you. And so we need you to show up. We need you to paint faces. We need you to pass out water. We need you to host the games. We need you there talking with families, praying over families, being bold with your faith. We just finished our sermon series, 80-20. We need 100% of you showing up, participating, saying, I will get out of my seat and I will do something because that is my mandate. See, it's our mandate to reach the lost. That's what he went to the cross for, was for the lost. While we were sinners, he died for us. We're sinners and we need Jesus. And there's a world right across the street that needs Jesus. And so I just encourage you, please sign up to help us with this outreach. Please make plans to be a part of every activity, every event we're doing for Easter, and don't show up by yourself. Bring somebody. Imagine how beautiful it will be to watch a friend, to watch your neighbor, to watch your family member come into the presence of God and find him for the first time. Be a part of that. Be a part of changing people's destinies. So if you have an offering this morning to give to missions, I just encourage you to mark it for missions so we know it goes there. We have multiple missionaries around the world that we support. We have missionaries here in San Antonio that we support. And everything that you give towards missions, it goes to help them do the work that they're doing across the nations. I also thank you for giving. Thank you for your tithes and your offerings and for being faithful to give and being obedient. The ways to give are there on the screen right behind you. Thank you for believing in the vision of this church, but mostly thank you that you believe in a God that supplies all your needs. And you trust him in all areas of your life. I'm so excited because today we are about to launch our new sermon series and Pastor Ivan's about to come up and talk about dangerous prayers. And we're gonna be doing this for the next few weeks, challenging you to begin to pray dangerous prayers. Prayers that require faith. Prayers that require boldness. Prayers that require full surrendering to God. And one thing I want to share with you this morning before he comes up 
is that I want you to also be praying a dangerous prayer with me about how you can more get involved in helping in serving. We've been talking about this 80-20, and I've, I've talked with some of you, and, and, and multiple of you are like, man, I know I need to do something. Then don't delay doing it. Don't say, well, I know I need to do something, but I'll get to it eventually. Like, decide today, I'm going to do something. Decide today, even if it's to sign up for the Easter outreach or to sign up to work in the coffee shop, but I'm going to get out of my seat and I'm going to start participating. But one of the things that I want you to pray about maybe helping and supporting and being a part of is our youth ministry. You see these guys up here on the front row? Pretty cool guys, right? Come on, guys. Like, We have some amazing students. This past week, they had over 40 students there in their meeting. And over this last like month or so, I've been coming to youth. My husband, our family's been coming to youth. And literally, like my life has been transformed by these students. But the thing that I understand and the thing I understood at the beginning of this year was that God was wanting to do something in our young, that was wanting to start something with our students and with the young adults in this church. He was wanting to pour something into them that would be poured out into the rest of the body. But he gave this warning that if we, that the older generation, don't help to shape and mold and make them ready for what he pours out, then what gets poured into them will just be dropped and misused and mishandled. But if we, the older generation, would decide to invest into them, they would learn faithfulness. They would learn good stewardship. They would learn longevity. And they would be able to hold the oil of anointing that's going to be poured into their lives. And every Wednesday they come and they meet and they worship God and they're growing. There's a passion. If you've been at these last two encounter nights, like literally they're the fire that's being flamed in this room, keeping it going because there's a passion inside of them. Last night, Gabby got up on the stage and shared her, her, her got real vulnerable with us and shared honestly with us and literally touched the hearts to like the depths of our soul. 17 year old doing this, changing lives. Because why? Because there's an anointing on this generation but they need us to help them. And we are in need of, of leaders. We are in need of help. We are in need. They, they, we have students from all over the city that come to our, our ministry, and we need people to drive vans to help pick these students up. As simple as that, pick them up. Maybe you want to pick them up. Somebody else maybe will help us drop them off. It doesn't matter. We just need to get these students here because they're hungry to come. We don't want anything to stand in their way. We need help serving. We need help cleaning up. We need help setting up. We want to be prepared every week for these students to have the best encounter, the best experience. We need your help. We need some of you that will say, you know what? I want to be a leader and actually like invest my life into them. Mentor them. Pray with them. Guide them. But we need you. And for this whole month, you're going to hear about these students. For this whole month, we're going to be talking about the youth ministry because I believe that we didn't just come off of a sermon of 80-20 for us to just stay 80-20. But we came off of this sermon series because we're called to be 100%. And so here's an opportunity for you to say, okay, I'm getting out of my seat. I'm not going to consume. I'm going to contribute. And I'm going to help reach this next generation. So I'm going to ask... I'm going to ask if there's any of the youth leaders in this room, you guys stand up. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> These youth leaders are going to be in the foyer at the end of the service. And if you want to help, you find one of them. And they will help get you connected. He's about to preach a sermon, and he's going to tell you, don't just be hearers, but be doers. So you saw them, and you're clapping for me. Don't clap for me. Go volunteer, okay? Go sign up to serve, and let's change people's lives. Amen? Okay. It's all yours, Pastor Ivan. Come on, Faith Church. We can do better than that. Let's give God some praise this morning. Love it. Are we ready for the word? Amen. I'm excited, and I, I did want to mention this one more time. I know Julia mentioned it, Pastor Kelly mentioned it, but I'll mention it again. Don't miss night three of Encounter Nights. I mentioned it uh, during first service. 
You know, all it takes is one moment and one encounter with God for your life to be changed. And so take every opportunity that God gives you to come into his presence because one moment in his presence and not only your life, but your family's lives and, and the entire world that surrounds you can be transformed because you had an encounter with God. If you read the scripture story after story, lives were changed, people were healed, lives were transformed after one encounter with Jesus. So take this opportunity that God is giving you. It's not Faith Church that's giving it to you. God is giving you an opportunity to have an encounter with him. So don't give up that opportunity. If you have plans, cancel them. Be here at 615, ready to go at 630 because God is going to move. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, let's get into today's message. Like Pastor Kelly was saying, today we are starting a brand new series titled Dangerous Prayers. And it's just that, right? It, it's it, we over the next three weeks we're going to highlight highlight different prayers throughout the scriptures, dangerous prayers. And throughout this series, we want to challenge you to begin praying these dangerous prayers. And I'm gonna let you know right now, this isn't gonna be the easiest message to receive and to listen to. This is gonna push you outside of your comfort zone. This is gonna challenge you to do things that you might not want to do, but. God God moves when we choose to allow ourselves to be uncomfortable. God moves when we allow ourselves or when we believe in God enough to make these dangerous prayers in our lives because God is listening. And when you begin to pray in a way that is dangerous, in a way that pushes God, that pushes ourselves, God moves. Amen. And that's what we're going to be talking about over the next three weeks. So don't miss the next three weeks. Bring some friends with you. Share the message online so everybody can hear. Amen. Amen. Let's take a quick moment. Close your eyes and let's just uh, pray for one second. God, I thank you, Lord, for this day that you've given us. I thank you, my God, because you just gave us a privilege to worship you and praise you with freedom. We thank you, my God, for your move here in this place and because you are present, my God, and that's the most important thing. We pray that you continue to move, speak into our lives, give us the understanding, my God, and as this message is shared, let it be your words, let it be you, my God, who's speaking into every person who is here, Lord. We praise you, we worship you, in Jesus' name, amen. So I'm going to start off by asking you a question. I'm, I'm going to ask you, I'm already going to make you a little bit uncomfortable. I'm going to ask you to raise your hand if this applies to you. But how many of us here today believe that there is power in prayer? If you believe that there's, uh, come on, there we go. If you believe there's power in prayer, raise your hand. Okay, that's, that's the majority of us. But see, this is where I'm going to begin to make you just a little bit uncomfortable because I, I like making people uncomfortable. I think that's a good thing. See, how many of you who just raised your hands, who just acknowledged that there is power in prayer, how many of you, we're going to be honest, you can be honest in the house of God, how many of you would say that your prayer life isn't as consistent as it should be? How many of us would say, hey, I don't pray as much as I should. I don't pray the way that I should. You know, like this is something I can get better with. See, my, my, my thought process is this. Why do we as Christians, and, and, and listen to what I just said, we, because this is something that sometimes I struggle with too. Why do we as Christians, knowing the power that we have before us, knowing that there's power in prayer, knowing that when we pray, God listens, he moves, and he speaks, and, and he does the miraculous. Why knowing that there's so much power that we have? We have this freedom to, be, to come before God and just to be able to speak freely before him. And knowing that we have this ability Knowing that there's this power, there's this almighty God that listens to every single prayer that we speak. Why do we struggle in consistently coming before God and praying? Right, why do we struggle in the prayers that we make? Because see, some of us, if we're going to be realistic, we only pray if we're lucky three times a day. Think about what those three times are. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Right? For a lot of us, our prayer life consists of a very simple thing. See, a lot of us pray when, when we're about to eat those atomic hot wings with fries and fried pickles and that extra large Coke with extra ice. And, and here's the kicker. What's our prayer? God, let it be nourishing to our bodies. Right? Hey, you've done it before. 
See, some of us, our, our biggest prayer happens during the holidays when we're about to go to the mall and we know that, that parking is crazy. And this is something my wife and I have done. God, please let me find a parking spot. Like, please, Lord, at the front, let somebody be pulling out as I'm arriving. And you know what? God listens. Like, I, uh, God listens. Like, it's happened, right, where we pray these, these small little prayers and God listens. You know, there, I, I talked about this last week during our Spanish service. I love the fact that we serve a God who can do the big things, right? He can answer those big prayers. He can do those miraculous things. But I love that God shows his love and his intentionality through the small things that he does in our lives. I love that God loves us enough that he spoils us where, where he doesn't just give us the things that we truly need, but sometimes he wants you to know how much he loves you by doing the things that you just desire sometimes. That sometimes he just wants you to feel spoiled. But see, why don't we pray the way that we should? I believe that some of us don't pray the way that we should because we feel we're not good at praying. Right? We just simply believe that this God didn't give me that skill set. I remember when I first came to Christ, well, the first time I, I started going to a Christian church, I was about 15 years old. And I'll be honest, I didn't want to be there. I wanted nothing to do with that church. I'm just being real with you. Right? And it took a little while, it took a few months before I, I kind of started warming up to it, and I decided to go to a prayer meeting at, at that church I was at. They prayed every single morning, and I showed up one day, and it was, they had a prayer room. And you had all these people just walking around and praying out loud, and they would take turns praying. And I just sat in the corner, and I was like, ah, they better not call on me to pray. And then they would take turns. One would stop. The other one would start praying. And I would just sit in the corner with my eyes closed and try to be as invisible as possible. Why? Because, see, I felt that I didn't have that ability or that skill set to pray. Some of us simply don't pray because we feel that we just can't pray long enough. We all have those friends, right, who can go into their prayer closet and pray for over an hour and come out and still have things to say, right? And for us, sometimes it's a struggle just to pray for a handful of minutes. Maybe you don't pray because you hear other people praying and quoting scripture after scripture and declaring those promises and, and, and saying all these amazing things. You're like, man, I, I just... I don't know those scriptures yet, right? Yet, right? And the reality is that a lot of us who are here simply don't pray because we find prayer boring. Uh, we, we find prayer something that we just simply do not enjoy. But see, the reality is that we have become used to praying safe, mundane, predictable, and simple prayers. See, the reason why your prayer life is boring, why prayer is boring for you is because of the prayers that you make. Because like I said, some of us, we have confined our prayers to the simplest things. Maybe your wildest, craziest prayers in the morning when you say, God, protect me today, protect my family today. And you know what? That's a good prayer to make. Pray over your children. Pray over yourself. But see, I believe that the only ones who have kept God from doing the miraculous, the only people who are keeping God from truly answering those deepest desires that we have are ourselves. It's me. It's my lack of faith to be able to pray for the miraculous and believe that God can do it. See, I believe that God is literally just waiting for his people to ask for crazy, miraculous, big things to happen for him to just kind of snap his fingers and go to work. But see, we, we pray these simple, mundane, basic prayers when God is asking us to ask him for the world. See, and not only does he allow us to ask for anything, I love that the scriptures say that what he has prepared for us is beyond anything that we can imagine. So not only does he want to begin to do what you ask him for, right, those great big things, but he tells you even those big prayers that you think you are making don't compare to what I want to do in your life. They don't compare to what I have prepared for you because that is the God that we serve. How many of us today know and believe that we serve an all-powerful God? 
We serve an all-powerful God. How many of us know that we serve a God who has already healed and continues to heal? We serve a God who restores. We serve a God who has brought people back from the dead. We serve a God who parted the Red Sea. Think about it. God is a, a, a God who does miracles. That's who he is. That's, that's a part of him. He isn't satisfied with us just enjoying moments by ourselves in this room within these four walls. He wants us to reach our entire community. He wants us to reach this city. He wants us to reach this nation because that is who God is. Amen? See, have you ever seen someone? Let me start by saying if this is you, I apologize. I don't mean to offend anyone. Right? But have you ever seen those people who walk into the Apple store, right? If you have an Android phone, you might not understand this example. But those people who walk into the Apple store, right, and, and they get the newest iPhone, the iPhone 15, but not the regular one, the Pro Max, and not the base one that comes with 256 gigs, the one that has like a whole terabyte that costs like almost $2,000, right? And then they go home, they unwrap this beautiful phone, and the only things that they do with their phone is check Instagram and send text messages. See, I've met some of these people, and I see they, they basically have a, a full computer, the power of a computer in the palm of their hands. And all they use it for is for Instagram. All they use it for is text messaging and snapping a few pictures. So much power at the palm of their hands, right? The, the, just just a, a world of possibilities. And all they do is use it for Instagram. But see, a lot of us are the same way when it comes to God. We have so much power. We have so much at our fingertips. God has already given us free access to him, to his presence, to his power. God has already filled the scriptures with hundreds of promises of things that he already has told you. This is what I want to do in your life. This is how I want to use you. Right? But we limit God to just the simplest, basic things. God bless this food that I'm about to eat and let those calories please not count. See, we limit God to the simplest thing when he's literally giving us access to anything and everything. See, today I want to read, uh, uh, we're going to be reading through Acts chapter 4 and Acts chapter 5, but before I get into the story, just to preface this, here uh, at this point where I'm going to begin reading, we have Peter, we have John, they just finished healing a man who couldn't walk for 40 year, over 40 years, he was crippled, uh, and after they, they healed this man, it says that the, the people from the council, the, the priests, the Jeju, uh, how do you say, the Sadducees, I think I said that correct, I practiced that all week, John, I just butchered it, Sadducees, right, they were, they were unhappy with John and Peter, they were unhappy of the fact that they were healing people in the name of Jesus, they were unhappy at the fact that they were preaching the word of Jesus, that they were preaching about the death and the resurrection of Jesus, they were unhappy with what these men were doing to the point that they put John and Peter in prison, and then if you read in Acts chapter 4, verses 7 through 10, it says they brought in the two disciples and, they man and demanded, by what power or in whose name have you done this? And Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers and elders of our people, are we being questioned today because we've done a good deed for a crippled man? Do you want to know who, how he, has, he was healed? Let me clearly state to all of you and to all the people of Israel that he was healed by the power of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, the man you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead. See, I don't know what you think, but as I was listening to reading this story, I was like, man, like, these guys were bold. They were in a position where they all were already hated. They were literally in prison. They weren't happy with what they were doing. And they asked them, what are you doing? What do they say? You want to know what we're doing? You want to know who healed that man? It was Jesus Christ. And that wasn't it. And then I feel like they popped their chest up and said, Jesus is the one you crucified. But God rose from the dead. That's boldness. 
right? When a lot of us might have taken a step back and said, see, what happened was, you know, why I did this, they said, it was Jesus, the one you crucified, but God rose from the dead. Boldness. See, they were bold. And how did they respond to this? In Acts 4.13, it says, The members of the council were amazed when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, for they could see that they were ordinary men with no special training in the Scriptures. I love this passage. It says, They were amazed at their boldness, and they were amazed. Why were they amazed? Because they weren't preachers, they weren't scholars, they weren't theologians, they didn't graduate from Bible college. It says what? They were ordinary men without special training in the scriptures. How many ordinary people are in this house right now that are willing and able to stand boldly and serve God? See, a lot of us have limited ourselves because we are like, it's because I don't know the scriptures like Pastor Kelly knows the scriptures. It's because I can't sing or, or play instruments like, like this worship team does. It's, I don't have the knowledge. I haven't been doing this for that long. Ordinary men without any special training. And the people who wanted to kill them and to destroy them and for them to stop, says they were amazed because they were bold and because they were ordinary men. See, God doesn't need any special anything. Just needs people who are willing to stand boldly. People who are willing to say, hey, you know what? I, I, I don't feel like I'm good at this. I don't feel like it's my time, but I want to be a part of that, that, that Easter outreach. Like, I've never done that before. I've never been a part of a, an event like that, but you know what? I want to be a part of it. I want to be used by God. It takes people who are willing to be bold and make yourself uncomfortable because you believe in the power of God. That's all it takes. See, and what happened after that, it, it wasn't like, oh, they're amazing, they're bold. I'm amazed. Y'all can go. Keep preaching. That's not how that worked. Verse 18, it says, so they called the apostles back in and commanded them to never again to speak or to teach the name of Jesus. They called them back and they said, never again. Stop preaching the name of Jesus. They threatened him with prison. They threatened him with death. They threatened him with everything you could imagine. They said, no more. No more preaching. What do you think that in that moment John and Peter did? Let me take a step back. Let me let things cool down a bit. You know, let, let, let's find a, a safe spot, and then maybe we'll come back. We'll try it again later. Peter and John decided to say a prayer in that moment. And this is the prayer that we are going to highlight today in Acts chapter 4, verse 29. Highlight it in your Bible, in your phone, wherever it is at, because this is what we want to challenge you to pray this week. Acts 4, 29, it says, And now, O Lord, hear their threats. I love that. I say, hear the threats. Like, God, you can hear. You, you know what they're threatening us with. But listen to this. And give us, your servants, great boldness in preaching your word. What was their prayer in that moment? Make me bold. In a place where they had just came out of prison, where they were threatened with more prison and so many other things, when they could have taken a step back, and most of us would have probably understood, they came before God. They said, you hear their threats, but you know what we want? Make us bold. Give us the boldness to continue to preach. See, when you think about yourself and your lifestyle, your walk with Christ, would you describe yourself as bold? And this is a answer this to yourself. Would you describe your walk with God bold? Acts 4, 29, 31, it, it, it says what I just read now. And now, Lord, O oh Lord, hear their threats. Give us your servants great boldness in preaching your word. Stretch out your hand with healing power. May miraculous signs and wonders be done through the name of your holy servant Jesus. Then after this prayer, the meeting place shook, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Then they preached the word of God with boldness. See, there's something very important. There's something key in this scripture because a lot of you, as you are hearing this message, you're already making excuses. Sorry, I had to say it. 
You're already saying, but God just, he, I wasn't born with boldness, right? God didn't give me that courage, right? That's not what I was called to do. Like, let other people live with that boldness. God made me shy, made me introverted, right? God made me quiet. That's not me. See, boldness is not a personality trait, you're not born with boldness. It says that the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and when you were naturally quiet, now you are suddenly filled with spiritual boldness. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is in you now. See, that's what happens. He says, they prayed, God, give me boldness. It says, the Holy Spirit came down, the place shook, and then they were able to go out and preach with boldness. Why can't we do that? Because we're not asking for it. See, I believe that if you wake up tomorrow morning and you say, God, give me boldness to preach. Give me the boldness to stand up, to do whatever it is that you're going to ask me to do. I don't care how hard it is, how uncomfortable it makes me, how unprepared I feel. I believe that if we take the time every morning to ask God for boldness, God is going to listen. And he's going to give you opportunities to be bold. And when you walk in those opportunities, miracles are going to happen. Because that's what the Bible says. Not what Ivan says. It's not what Pastor Kelly says. That's what the Bible says. That's what we were created to do. But we have placed a cap on what God is doing. It says in Acts 5, 18 through 20, they arrested the apostles, put them in the public jail. But an angel of the Lord came at night, opened the gates of the jail, and brought them out. Then he told them, go to the temple and give the people the message of life. I want to quickly just mention three attributes of boldness. What's going to happen in your life and through your life when you wake up tomorrow morning? Because every single one of us, amen, is going to wake up tomorrow morning. And the first thing we're going to do when that alarm goes off is we're going to ask God to make us bold. And this is what we were talking about earlier. See, we all want to see these miracles happen. We want to see God move. We have these encounter nights, and we're praying for, for all these amazing things to happen. But you have to be willing to be obedient to what God is asking you to do. And for some of you, it's going to begin by tomorrow morning waking up and asking God to make you bold. And when you don't want to do it, and when you're afraid of doing it because you're like, I don't know what God is going to ask me to do or make this prayer, you got to do it. Because, see, one thing is to listen to this message and say, man, that was good. Man, God spoke. But you wake up tomorrow morning, and the first thing you do is check that Instagram. I said it. You know who I'm talking about. But when we begin to make these dangerous prayers, man, God is going to move. And sooner than later, this place is going to be filled with people who are hungry for that same move that's happening already. Why? Because they saw it in us, and we were bold enough to tell them about what God is doing in this place. So number one, boldness almost always triggers spiritual opposition. Peter and John were released from prison for the second time. They continued to preach and give the people the message of life. And it says in Acts 5.18, they arrested the apostles and put them in public jail. See, when you choose to follow God, when you choose to live boldness, that boldness will bring opposition. I would love to tell you that everything is going to be fun and perfect, and you're going to enjoy just encounter nights and worship nights. But whenever you choose to follow God boldly, opposition will come. People who used to be your friends are going to hate you. People who used to spend every day with you won't want to see you anymore. Your own family might turn their backs on you. Why? Because people don't like it when our light shines over their darkness. They don't like it. But that's what we were called to do. I remember when we gave our lives to Christ as a family, uh, it, it was months before all the invitations to the parties, to the family get-togethers, to the holidays stopped. Why? Because we were crazy enough to give our lives to Jesus, and people didn't like that, right? Because that's what happens. There's opposition when we give our lives over to God, and when you choose to serve God boldly, to share God boldly, to live for God boldly, there will be opposition. So be ready for it, because that's what's going to happen. 
but it's going to be worth it. I promise. The second thing, boldness releases God's miracles. In verse 19, chapter 5, it says, But an angel of the Lord came at night, opened the gates of the jail, and brought them out. As Peter and John were in prison for I don't know what time, I, I lost count. As they were in prison, one more time it says that an angel came down and let them free. Open the gates of the prison. But you know what? I read this several times. I even checked a few different translations. And one thing that I loved is that you never see Peter and John ask for an angel to come down and set them free. All they did was walk boldly. Pray for boldness. Be obedient. They gave everything. And as they were obedient to what God was asking them to do, God began to do the miraculous, even without them asking. Right? The angel came down. The angel opened the gates, and they were free. That is our God. He wants to do the miraculous, crazy things we've been asking for. But are you bold enough to be obedient so he can do the things that he wants to do in each and every one of us? He is with us when the opposition comes. When people throw you in prison, when people begin to hate you, when people come against you and your family and your loved ones, God's going to take care of you. He's going to be with you. And miracles will be unleashed because of your boldness. And the third thing, and this is my favorite, boldness always requires faith. Acts 5, 20 through 21, go to the temple, give the people this message of life. So at daybreak, the apostles entered the temple, as they were told, and immediately began teaching. See, John and Peter had already been in jail multiple times for the exact same thing, for preaching the gospel, right? And then the angel comes down, he sets them free, and what does the angel tell them? Relax for a little bit. Stop. I'll tell you when to do it again, right? Be safe, protect yourself for just a little while, right? That's what the angel said. No, it says go to the temple and give the people the message of life. The angel said keep on doing the exact same thing that you've been doing. Continue preaching the gospel. Continue putting your life at risk. Continue being bold. Preach the word of Jesus Christ. That is boldness. He said, go to the temple and give the people the message of life. Keep on doing what got you in trouble. Keep on doing what has your life at risk. Continue doing what other people think it's crazy. Be bold. And why did all of this happen? Because they chose to say a dangerous prayer. They chose in the middle of a very difficult situation to come before God and say, make me bold. As I was standing in the back towards the end of worship and and I was just kind of watching everyone worship and I, I was attracted to these first couple of rows that Pastor Kelly was talking about earlier. And in my head, all I could think of was, Imagine if every single one of these young people woke up tomorrow and said, make me bold. If they are already changing the world, imagine if tomorrow, and I'm, I'm focusing on them, but hey, that's for y'all too. Imagine if each and every one of us who are here wake up tomorrow morning and say, God, make me bold. You know, I, I don't know what that's going to look like. I don't know what that's going to be, but just make me bold. And give me the strength to be obedient when you are giving me those opportunities to be bold. So you never know what God might set into motion through a single act of bold obedience. And we'll close with this. You never know what God is going to do through your one simple act of bold obedience. Your one act of bold obedience can transform your whole family. Your one act of bold obedience can transform somebody else's family. See, I was telling you a little bit about my testimony when I came to church, hated it, didn't like it, didn't want to be there, right? But over 20 years later, as I, I think it was Friday, night one of our encounter nights, and I saw my 11-year-old daughter sitting in the front worshiping God. You know what I was grateful for? 
for the lady that was bold enough to invite my parents to church. For that lady that was bold enough to invite my parents time and time and time again until my mom finally said, let's go. Because it wasn't just my parents. It wasn't just me. Now it's three generations that get to worship God freely because one person was bold. Picture that. Your boldness can impact other people's generations. Your obedience can impact the lives of many. 20 years from today, there could be another young man like myself. So, is that young man? So, that is serving God fully because you chose today to be bold. Generations transformed. <laughs> Worship God. That, that's God. Amen? Because we chose to live boldly. We chose to be obedient. We chose to give it all even when we were afraid. And I would love to tell you that your boldness is going to lead to just an amazingly peaceful, loving life. I would love to tell Pastor Kelly with confidence that her life dedicated to preaching the word of God and leading this church and having the, the weight and the burden of all she does is going to lead to an amazing retirement in a few years where she can put her feet up and just enjoy a, 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 the fruit of all her labor. But I couldn't. I can't tell you that boldness is going to lead you into just uh, an amazing, peaceful life here on earth. See, if we look just in John and Peter, men who served God boldly and gave everything time and time again, contemporary historians say that John was arrested. He was dipped in burning oil, boiling oil, which was meant to kill someone, but he survived, which I don't think was a good thing that he survived that. And then he says, after surviving that, he was exiled and lived the rest of his life alone. Peter died crucified on a cross. He gave everything for the gospel because he chose to live boldly. See, it's not about the rewards on this earth. It's not about the glory it's not about the opportunities. Living boldly is simply about reaching people for Christ. Living boldly is going to look different for each and every one of us. Some of you might not even have noticed, but all last month we put these little cards on your seats. And the point of it wasn't for you to just move them to the side as you sat down. The point of it was for you to put this in your purse, in your wallet, in your pocket, and as you went to a restaurant, as you saw people at work, for you to boldly give them this card and let them know, hey, I'm saving you a seat. Because how will people know if we don't tell them? How will people come if we don't invite them? How will people come to know Christ if we who have Christ don't share Christ with them? See, for some of you, praying God make me bold might begin with you actually taking this card today with you actually putting it in your pocket and for you actually giving it away sometime this week. And you know what? That might trigger so many other things. Because, see, why do we continuously live boldly? Why did John and Peter throughout every obstacle continue to do the exact same thing? Why did they continue to share Christ? See, I believe it takes one time. I believe it takes one act of obedience. I believe that it just takes you doing one simple thing, which might be giving out this card. But see, as, as, you, as you obey, as you are bold, as you share the gospel, and as you begin to see the fruit of what you've done. See, as next Sunday, after you give this card away this week, and you see that person walk through those doors, and then you see that person raise their hand and accept Jesus, and you see them bring their family and their kids, and as you see them begin to serve and grow spiritually, guess what? You're going to say, God, let's do this all over again. As you see the fruit of your obedience, of your boldness, you're not going to want to stop. You're going to want more. 
You're going to be hungrier than ever. And every morning you will continuously ask, ask God to make you bold, to give you the strength and the ability and the doors wide open for you to reach people, for you to be a difference maker. Because that's who we were created to be. And I want to invite you this morning, if you want to stand up, if you want to stay seated, just close your eyes. If you want to raise your hand. But this morning, I want to challenge you to begin to pray for boldness. And my challenge for you this week, listen to me, church. Again, my hope and my desire isn't for you to leave this place and say, man, that was a good message. If that's all you do today, that's it, then what was the point? My prayer is that as you leave here today, as you wake up tomorrow morning, that whatever you heard today triggers you to say, God, make me bold today. And for you to wake up on Tuesday and for you to say, God, make me bold today. That you can wake up on Wednesday, on Thursday, on Friday, on Saturday, that you can say, God, make me bold and not just give me the opportunities, but help me walk in that boldness. Help me share your word. Help me give out some cards. Help me share the gospel with others. Help me show your love to others because that's what you have called me to do, God. I'm gonna invite you in your own words, just raise up your hands and just say, God, I pray that you give me that boldness to even just to begin to pray for boldness. God, give me the, the, the passion, the desire, the hunger to tomorrow morning or even right now, God, to say, God, make me bold. I don't know what it's going to look like. I have no idea what you're going to ask for. But my God, my prayer is that you can give me the boldness to do whatever you are going to ask me to do, Lord. And God, my prayer today is over those people who are sitting here today listening to this message. And in this moment, don't feel the courage to pray that over themselves. I pray that you give them the boldness tomorrow. Give them the boldness to wake up and ask for boldness. Give them the boldness and the faith, God, to hunger and to desire, Lord, all the things that you have prepared for them. God, make me bold. If you are sitting here this morning and maybe you've never even accepted Christ into your life, and as you heard this message, God just began to just tug on your heart. And today you understand the need that you have for Jesus. While everyone's eyes are closed, if you would like today to give your life to Jesus, I'm just going to invite you to raise your hand up high. Thank you for those hands. If you want to give your life to Christ, just raise your hand up high today and do it proudly. Church, uh, join me in making this, saying this prayer together. Jesus Christ. We thank you for that sacrifice. We thank you for your love, your forgiveness. Thank you for your grace. Today, I give you my life. I give you my heart. I pray that you forgive me and that you use me in ways I could never imagine. In Jesus' name. As we close out with a moment of worship, I just invite you and I challenge you to continue praying for that boldness. If you want to come up to the altar, our prayer team will be here at the front. And we just pray that God will show you ways to be bold this week. Amen. We love you guys. God bless you. Let's continue to worship. If you want to spend some time in the presence of God, and we will be waiting for you tonight at 630. Create in me your heart that's clean. For the thoughts inside, oh God, please forgive me. Oh, search me and make me new. I don't want a thing separating me from you. And I want more of you. I just want